Hey everyone, my name is Matt Spataro and welcome to the first tutorial, Getting Started with VS Code. I'm really excited to share this tutorial series with you because I think that VS Code is one of the most helpful tools that you'll use as an intern here at the ATR Center. So why Visual Studio Code? Well, for one, it's lightweight. And for another reason, it's extendable. So that means that you can install different extensions to kind of customize it to be the way that you want it to be. But most importantly, it has the best remote development of any other platform that I've used. And this is especially important for us because we're doing a lot of deep learning. And that means that we need to run our code on a, a remote cluster or server that has a lot of GPUs and processing power. The only problem is that traditionally, all the editing tools are on our laptop. And so we often have to kind of switch between these two different places, our laptop to edit the code, and then some remote cluster to actually run the code. And VS Code, what it does is essentially moves those editing tools to that remote server. So we can do everything all in one place. We can edit, run, and debug remotely. And this makes the whole process a lot more convenient. So what can you expect from these tutorials? Well, anyone can follow along, but they were created specifically for all of our Nina's AFRL interns. They're meant to be followed. So please don't just watch or listen to these, but actually type in the commands along with me. And by no means are these tutorials comprehensive, but hopefully it's enough to get you started so that by the end, you'll be able to edit, run, and debug on some sort of remote server. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is install VS Code. So open up a web browser, just type in VS Code, and then just click on that first link. And you should see a download button for your particular operating system. So click on that. And you should see that the download will start. And if you ever have any trouble with this process, just click on this setup uh, tab over here. And it has specific instructions for your particular operating system. So I've had the most trouble with Linux. And for whatever reason you get hung up on that, make sure to just click on that link and follow those instructions. All right, so it looks like it's finished downloading. So now I'm just gonna open that file. I'm going to double click it to run it. This might take a second here, but we'll be patient. All right, perfect. Uh, we're going to basically just follow all the instructions now. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna accept the agreement. Uh, and then I'm just gonna kind of say yes to all of these, the default settings and install. Give this a second to finish installing. All right, perfect. And so now it's finished. I'll just click on the finish button and it should automatically open it up for me. So here is VS Code. And what I like to do, um, I like to just kind of pin it to the little start bar. Uh, and you're gonna start getting all these little pop-ups too. So this is asking me to install a different um, extension. I'm just gonna ignore that for now. And I'm going to right click on the tab right here and pin to the task bar so that I always have it there. And you can do that for your particular operating system as well. Okay, so now that we have it installed, let's just take a quick tour of VS Code. So we'll take it from the top. This right here is the menu bar, has lots of useful buttons. I don't find myself using it very often because you'll notice there are the, these keyboard shortcuts here on the right. And so if you know the keyboard shortcuts, you can often just use those instead. Um, then on the left right here, we have this little sidebar and you can click on one of these icons to open it up and then click on it again to close it. Um, we'll talk more about these in depth later, but for now, this is like the file explorer. This is the search. Um, this is source control for something like Git. Um, this is run and debug. And then this is the extensions button. So um, like I said before, VS Code is extendable and you can add all sorts of these uh, plugins to kind of customize it to be the way that you want it. Um, right here, this is kind of where you can sign into your account. I'm signed into my GitHub. 
Um, and then you have all sorts of settings that you can manage. One thing that I'll point out are these keyboard shortcuts. So VS Code is really heavy on keyboard shortcuts. And um, if you ever kind of get lost or you forget something, you can just kind of type in the command that you want to do, and then it will show you the key binding. So for example, if I wanted to like open a file, I can just enter that in and you'll see the command file open a file is just control O. And this might be different depending on your operating system. I think uh, Linux is pretty similar to Windows, but for Mac, most of the time, instead of control, you'll just use command. Um, so yeah, this is really cool. You can kind of look at all these different keyboard shortcuts. You can actually uh, create your own as well. So if I just like picked a random command here, you can enter in your own key bindings as well. So very um, heavy on the keyboard shortcuts. Okay, and then down here, um, we have our terminal window and you can kind of resize this to be whatever size you want. Um, because I'm on Windows, it's PowerShell, but for you, it might be Bash or your kind of default shell. Um, if I want to kind of toggle this on and off, so I can go like view up here and I can click on terminal and you can see the keyboard shortcut for Windows is control and then backtick. Um, so if I just do control backtick, that will kind of toggle it on and off, which can be useful at times. Um, and then you can create a new terminal by clicking on this plus button. Now I have two different terminals. I'm going to close this one. You can split the terminal. So there's kind of like some terminal multiplexing going on a little bit like Tmux, if you're familiar with that. Um, and I'll kind of let you play around with that and figure that out more later on your own. I guess there's also these tabs. So here's the terminal tab. The debug console will eventually use when we start debugging Python code. Um, output, this is just like specifically VS Code output. Generally, you don't have to worry about this. And problems, this is like VS Code problems um, that are detected in your workspace. And we'll talk more about that later as well. But you, for now, you can kind of just click between these tabs. Usually, I just keep it on this terminal tab for the most part. So yeah, that's the general overview of VS Code. And we will um, pick up with this in our next tutorial. Thanks for watching.